What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something really exciting from Chewy. Now this is known as the Lark Box and this is definitely one of the smallest x86 PCs that I've ever had on my channel. I was actually supposed to receive this a few weeks ago but it's been on hold with DHL due to all the craziness going on in the world. But it's finally here and in this video we're going to take a look at and test out the upcoming Lark Box from Chewy. And this is it. This is the whole PC. Now there is a power supply included and we will take a look at that in a second, but this thing is absolutely tiny. It's around the same size as my Logitech mouse, but this is a 4K capable, ultra small x86 based PC that can run Windows 10 or Linux or pretty much any other operating system that'll work on an Intel x86 CPU. Along with the Lark box itself, we also receive a few accessories in here. I believe there's a vase amount inside of this little package here. So you can mount this on the wall or the back of your monitor if you really want to. We also have the user manual and some more documentation. And finally, we have the power supply. Now the Lark box is going to be powered from a USB Type-C port on the back of the box itself. And you're going to use this 12 volt 2 amp power supply to do so. Unfortunately, with all the adapters that I have, I'm not able to use any kind of data pass through. So I guess the USB Type-C port on the Lark box is only included for power. The power supply for the Lark box looks like it's going to take up more room than the PC itself. But don't get me wrong, even with the power supply, this is still a really small PC that's usually going to be hanging under your desk depending on how you have this PC set up. Now on the front, we just have a single power button. On the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This does audio in and audio out. Around back, we have our USB Type-C port only included for power, a full-size HDMI port, and two USB 3.0 ports. And I'll give you a quick size comparison here. This is a Logitech MK270 mouse. We also have a Coca-Cola can. This is a normal size Coca-Cola. And finally, the Raspberry Pi 4. I know a lot of my viewers might already have one of these sitting on their desk. This will give you a good idea of how small this PC really is, because seeing it on camera or in pictures doesn't really do it justice. As for the specs of the Lark box, for the CPU we have the Intel Celeron J4115. This is a quad-core CPU at 1.8 GHz with a single-threaded boost up to 2.5 or a multi-threaded boost up to 2.3. Built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics up to 700 MHz, 6 GB of non-user replaceable LPDDR4 RAM at 2133 MHz. When it comes to storage, we have a 128GB built-in eMMC, but we can also add an M.2 2242 SSD up to 1TB, and I'll show you that slot in just a second, it's on the bottom of the unit. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, two USB 3.0 ports, USB Type-C for power, and an external micro SD card slot. Now since this is using an x86 CPU, we have a ton of different operating systems that we can install, but these usually come preloaded with Windows 10. On the box, there is a marking for Linux, and I'm not sure if they're going to offer that down the road or not, but you could always install it if you'd like to. And by the way, the Lark box does have a built-in fan, so this is not passively cooled, and it definitely needs it in a small package like this. The fan is audible at full load, sitting right next to you on the desk, but it's really not that loud. I mean, it doesn't get too annoying. Now, this video is already going to turn out to be pretty long, so I will do a dedicated teardown video in the future, so keep an eye on the channel. But now I think it's time to boot this thing up and see how it really performs. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at was the BIOS, and it looks like it's pretty much unlocked. I mean, you're not going to be able to overclock the CPU because we have a little Celeron, and the RAM is non-overclockable from the BIOS. I was kind of hoping I could take it up to 2400 megahertz, but unfortunately the option is gone from here. But you can mess around with the thermals if you want to. And the only thing that I've changed in here was under CPU configuration, power management, power limit one enabled. I turn this off. I just want to make sure that we can boost to the highest boost clock of 2.5 or 2.3 as long as possible with this unit. Okay, so here we are running Windows 10 Home 64 bit. We have that J4115, 6 gigs of RAM, and this is set up in dual channel mode, so it's definitely going to help out with that tiny GPU. And for the GPU, we have the UHD 600 graphics. Now, I've actually had a really good experience with this. This is not the first time that I've tested this exact CPU. I've done tests on the Odroid H2+, Plus, and the performance between the two are definitely on par with each other. We do have slower RAM in this unit at 2133 versus 2400 MHz, but I'm really not noticing a big performance loss here. I went ahead and just tested the built-in eMMC, 128GB. 
Definitely not as fast as some of the SSDs I've tested or have in some of my PCs, but overall for built-in eMMC storage, it definitely feels snappy. It's not going to slow you down. I also went ahead and ran a Geekbench 5 single core score on the Larkbox's 410, Multi 1153, and this is still on par with that Odroid H2. But I'm going to compare this to another low-end chip it's in a more expensive device, the Surface Go 2. It's the Intel 8100Y, single core, 855, Multi 1172. Now, as you can see, we're not far off from the multi-core score here, but that 8100Y is actually a dual-core CPU with four threads. So if we did have four physical cores in that 8100Y, it would blow the Lark box out of the water in multi-core scores also. So overall usability, like web browsing and video playback, is really good on the Lark box. We're just going to head over to a website real quick, just show you here how fast it is. And I do have a pretty decent internet connection here. But overall, I mean, if you just want to buy something like this to browse the web, you're going to have no issues at all. Everything is super smooth here, loads up really quick. I'm using the latest version of Edge. So web browsing, a non-issue for this unit. 4K video playback from YouTube. Again, I've tested this with the same chip using Linux and Windows. It definitely performs better on Windows. Make sure we're at 4K. So this is 60, 4K. We're getting a few drop frames here and there, but overall this is something you'd probably never notice. So if you do want to stream 4K from YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, it's going to work out on this box just fine. We're going to take it up a notch with streaming video by going to Plex. Now what I have here are some pretty high bitrate videos. We're going to start off a little low. 4K, 25 FPS, 22 megabits per second. And I didn't think we'd have an issue here. Everything's looking pretty good. So let's take it up a little more here. We have 4K, 60, 75 megabits per second. I got a feeling it'll handle this also. Excellent. No stutter here. 4K, 60, with a high bit rate. And I'm going to finish this off with not a 60, but a 25 FPS, 155 megabits per second 4K. Not sure if it's going to handle this high of a bit rate. Had a little stutter there. And that's buffering. But if you were buffered out, I mean, it would play this perfectly fine. So web browsing and 4K video streaming from your favorite sites or even Plex at a very high bit rate is totally possible on the Lark box. I mean, performance here is pretty good for a tiny little PC like this. So as for an everyday PC, for internet browsing, video streaming, checking your email, light image editing, document editing, the Lark box is going to work out just fine. But what about gaming? Now, I really want to get into some PC games here. I want to see if it can run Crisis. But before we get to Crisis, I got a few others to test here. First up, we have Overwatch, low settings, 720p. I think it defaults to around 50% resolution scale, like 49.7 or something like that when you hit low. But this is really impressive. This tiny little PC is actually able to run Overwatch at around 43 FPS. And I know Overwatch isn't the hardest game to run. It's very well optimized. It's been on the market for a little while. But it's still really impressive to see this little box run it this well. And if we take a look at the top left hand corner, I have Afterburner running. We take a look at that CPU temperature, we're hitting around 81 degrees Celsius. Now it does seem hot, but the CPU is not throttling right now. Next up we have World of Warcraft. Now I personally don't play this and I completely understand that when there's a big battle going on, your FPS is going to go down even further than this, but I'm still pretty impressed here seeing that we're running at an average of 48 FPS here.
Here we have Rocket League. Lowest settings we can go is 720p. We're getting an average of 26 FPS. Now I will admit that I've actually had better performance with this specific game on lower end chipsets. I'm not exactly sure what's been going on with the devs here, but it seems like performance has been decreased on these lower end chips for Rocket League. Dirt 3, low settings, 720p, we're getting an average of around 45 FPS. I know this is another older one, but you gotta keep in mind this is a very low end chipset here. CSGO, low settings, 1280 by 600. We're around 32 to 34 FPS on average, but you see it go down a lot in this game here. I tried to play for a couple rounds just to get that average up, and it kept around 33 FPS. And finally, the big question, will it run Crisis? Low settings, 720p, we're getting an average of 34 FPS. Now I had some issues with this and I always do on these low end chipsets like sound not working. So I had to run it in window mode at 720p with the desktop in the background at 1080. But it is working and it is running a lot better than I ever thought it would on the Lark box. This is actually pretty awesome to see. I know Crisis is old, but we still have that question all the time. Will it run Crisis? So in the end, the Lark Box is actually turning out to be an awesome little mini Windows 10 PC. I definitely want to test some Linux on here, and I will do that in an upcoming video, so let me know in the comments below what distribution you want to see running on the Lark Box. But before we wrap this up, I wanted to talk about power consumption. Now I have a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall. This is total power draw from the Lark Box. At idle, we're averaging 4.8 watts. 4K video playback in full screen from YouTube, 9.3 watts. And then in my extreme test, which consists of running 3D Mark and Cinebench R20 at the same time, 19.4 watts. So for the kind of performance we're seeing here, this is a pretty efficient little mini PC. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the Windows 10 performance of the Lark Box. This is actually an awesome little PC. I'm really glad to see that these are coming to the market. I know there will be more powerful ones released in the future. But right now, you can actually back the Kickstarter for the Lark Box. I think the base price on it is $155. You can get some different packages, and then it goes up from there. With 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and Windows 10 pre-installed, I really do think that this is worth $155. Whether you need a supplemental PC, or you're looking for a low power consumption PC for media playback, or light gaming. So definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have a couple more videos coming up on the Lark Box. Like I mentioned, I definitely want to test Linux, so let me know in the comments below what Linux distribution you'd like to see running on this. I would also like to do a dedicated video on a teardown and definitely test out the emulation performance of the Lark Box. I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here because I've tested it on the Odroid H2+, but it'd still be pretty cool to see. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave the Kickstarter link in the description in case you're interested in learning more or maybe even backing the project. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.